Good evening, and welcome to Mary's Seat of Wisdom as we celebrate the Mass of Thanksgiving, Mass of Thanksgiving for Father Andy Matajevic. We ask that you please keep your face mask on for the entirety of Mass. When it comes time for communion, please remain in your pew until an usher has invited your row to join the procession. As we begin our celebration, I invite you to please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Every gift, we confess that all we have and are comes down from you. Teach us to recognize the effects of your boundless care and to love you with a sincere heart and with all our strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, Jerusalem. Do not be discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior, who will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love, who will sing joyfully because of you as on festival days. I will remove disaster from among you so that no one may recount your disgrace. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish before him. In love he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intentions of his will, that we might exist for the praise of his glory, we who first hoped in Christ. In him you also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance towards redemption is God's possession to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. 
He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. Those who pray the Liturgy of the Hours know well these beautiful words of the Magnificat that are offered to the Lord each evening at Vespers. For the Magnificat is Our Lady's song of praise to Almighty God, who has done great things for us. Holy is his name. The words of the Magnificat are the gentle and mighty echo of the powerful prayer of Hannah in 2 Samuel. The words of the Magnificat become our own as we offer praise and thanks to God for his mighty deeds and for the great love he bestows upon his people. The question before all of us who are baptized, disciples of the Lord, may ask ourselves, does my soul magnify the Lord? How do we give praise and glory to Almighty God for all he has done for us? How does our soul magnify the Lord God? Speaking of magnifying, the venerable Archbishop Fulton J. Sheen once referred to the Blessed Mother as being like a magnifying glass that intensifies our love of her son. We may never be able to approach the Lord with the same level of holiness as our Blessed Mother, but we are all called to be saints nonetheless. And the words of the prophet Zephaniah in today's first reading becomes our song of joy for God's great love and passion for his people. Shout for joy, O daughter of Zion. Do not fear, do not be discouraged. The Lord is in your midst, a mighty savior who will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love, who will sing joyfully because of you. During this Easter season, we join together around the altar of the Lord as we celebrate the love of the crucified and risen Jesus among us. We await the coming of the Spirit as Pentecost approaches. Our hearts rejoice with gladness and are renewed in his love during these 50 days of Easter grace. Here in the Archdiocese of Chicago, our church rejoices during this Easter season as we celebrate the presence of the risen one among us. And in a special way, we thank the Lord for the nine newly ordained priests of Jesus Christ given to this local church last Saturday at Holy Name Cathedral. And tonight, in a particular way, at this solemn liturgy, we give thanks and praise to the Lord for Father Andy and for his yes to God, for his willingness to serve the Lord as a priest in his holy church. For those of us who know and love Father Andy, the seeds of his priestly vocation began long ago his wonderful family, his parents, Mike and Beth, along with his siblings, Mike, Dan, and Tim, who first brought him to the baptismal font of the waters of baptism and promised to educate and form him in the ways of the Catholic faith. With his family, the domestic church, his faith was nurtured and cared for by his own home parish of St. Thomas of Villanova in Palatine, especially during the time of his first Holy Communion. You know, it was 11 years ago that I began to celebrate Mass at St. Thomas of Villanova Parish. I was, at the time, on the Mundelein faculty, and I would offer weekend Masses there. And that's when I first met this tall, skinny, and quiet kid named Andy. Oftentimes, he would serve Mass for me and had expressed an interest in a priestly vocation program for high school boys called Quigley Scholars, offered at St. Joseph College Seminary in Chicago. So often when I saw Andy before Mass in the sacristy, as he prepared to serve, I thought, well, I should try to get to this, know this young man if he wants to be a priest. So I would ask Andy how he was doing. He'd say, fine. 
How's school? Fine. How do you like Quigley scholars? Good. Lots of one, or one word answers from the young Andrew in those high school days. Oh, how I yearn to return for those short and simple answers from Father Andy. I'm afraid the time of one word answers from this newly ordained priest has passed us. After high school graduation, Father Andy enrolled in our undergraduate seminary program at St. Joseph College Seminary, a place near and dear to my heart. And over the last 10, 10 years, it has been a delight to watch Father Andy grow in his knowledge and love of the Lord for the church and his desire for the holy priesthood. Many times, Father Andy would come and visit me at, Saint, at Mundelein Seminary, always though with some baked goods in hand perhaps a plate of his famous chocolate chip cookies, or banana bread, or sometimes a loaf of Irish soda bread for me, the Italian priest. <laughs> Listen, Father Andy, remember, you can bake for me anytime. His baked goods are the best. Oftentimes in our visits during those college seminary years, Father Andy would share his joys as well as some of his struggles he was experiencing in seminary life. And from my point of view, it was all part of growing up and the maturing process that takes place when one is making a decision to pursue the priesthood. Those years were challenging, but they were a great blessing for Father Andy as he began to see the hand of God in all that he would experience at the seminary and in his apostolate work. And in those privileged places and various ministry experiences, he saw that God was calling him to the priesthood. And during his Mundelein years, Father Andy began to grow in his confidence, his wisdom, his trust, that the Lord brought him to a place and a space where he needed to be. He would cultivate many friendships among his fellow seminarians that I think speaks volumes about Father Andy. He surrounded himself with seminarians and priests who would nurture and support the seeds of his priestly vocation. Father Andy also benefited from his parish internship and diaconate experience. And tonight we celebrate this mass in this church with this community where Father Andy's been supported and loved these past four years here at Mary's Seat of Wisdom. Often Father Andy told me how much he appreciated the years he was able to pray, work, and minister among the people of this wonderful Park Ridge Parish, in the school with the youth group, among the young and the young at heart. And it is with a most grateful heart that I know he returns here to celebrate this mass of thanksgiving for this parish family of Mary's seat who has supported and encouraged him to be a priest. We pray a good, holy, healthy, and effective priest. Father Andy, what a joy and a privilege it was for me last Saturday with family and friends surrounding you at Holy Name to witness your ordination as a priest of Jesus Christ. The reason for joy is obvious. The call to holy orders is a privilege. Every priest knows it, it deep in his bones, but he knows how very unworthy he is. Father Andy, during the ordination rite, you accepted the responsibility of the priesthood to discharge without fail the office of priesthood as a fellow worker with the order of bishops and caring for the Lord's flock. You promised to ex exercise the ministry of the word, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith worthily and wisely. You promise to celebrate faithfully and reverently the mysteries of Christ, especially the Holy Eucharist and the Sacrament of Reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people. You promise to implore God's mercy upon the people entrusted to their care through their prayer. And you promise with the help of God to be united to Christ the High Priest and to be consecrated to God for the salvation of all. Father Andy, you are now a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. With fraternal, and heart, with fraternal support and heartfelt prayers, I ask the Lord to help you to persevere to keep these solemn and sacred promises you have made before God and his holy church. Father Andy, I am so happy to call you a brother priest and a friend, to welcome you to the priesthood. It has been such a blessing to see how you blossomed over these years. Thank you. Thank you for your yes to God. Thank you for all you do to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to others. Thank you for saying yes to your priestly call. Father Andy, as you celebrate your priestly ordination and first solemn mass here at Mary's seat with your parents and your parish family and friends gathered around you, know that our heartfelt prayers 
and sincere best wishes accompany you on this solemn and special day. Through the sacramental life of the church, keep people connected to the Lord and blaze a trail for others to follow Jesus. And may your holy priesthood be wrapped closely to the sacred heart of Jesus in the maternal mantle and care of our Blessed Mother and in the paternal cloak of Saint Joseph. Ad multos andos, Father Andrew Medovitchevich. Confident that the Lord hears the petitions we place before Him, we place before Him these petitions. For the people of God, that they may joyfully proclaim all that the Lord has done for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government and elected officials, that they may support the dignity of every human person, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that more young men and women hear and respond to the call of Christ in service to his people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have supported Father Andy to this point, that God may bless them and keep them in his providential care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Father Andy's classmates, who will be ordained in the upcoming weeks, that the Lord may bless them in their ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked for our prayers, especially Zoe Zamara. For those who are sick, those with chronic illness, and those who suffer addiction and mental illness, that Jesus, the divine physician, may come to them and bring them healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For those who have journeyed with Father Andy and have gone to their eternal rest, especially Patrick Dolphin and Father Ron Lewinsky, that they may be joined to us in the heavenly liturgy, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have died, and for Jerry Marbach and Sandy Sylvester, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may bask in the glory of the face of God for eternity, we pray to the Lord. Lord Father in heaven, we love you, we adore you. We ask you to answer these prayers we place before you in accord with your most holy will, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the gifts you have bestowed, O Lord, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, humbly begging that what you have conferred upon us in our unworthiness, we may give back to the glory of your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night and gazing upon your, the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name and exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image, and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when, through disobedience, he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek you might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that, that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the Seat of Wisdom, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we may, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of you to enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. See what you believe in, and become what you receive.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have given to us as spiritual food the saving sacrament of your Son, which we have offered you in thanksgiving, grant that being strengthened by gifts of courage and joy, we may serve you more devout, devotedly and be worthy of still further blessings. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Bishop Bartosik, brother priests, deacons, seminarians, friends in Christ. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you all for supporting Andy, encouraging him, um, just treating him as a man of God that he is. Uh, we are all very grateful to God tonight for the gift of the priesthood and for the gift of Andy who um, has very generously said yes at a very early age. Uh, there's not very many 20-something year old priests out there, so um, you are a blessing to the church. You are a blessing to this community, and we are with you. This is your family. We know you have a home with your parents. You will have a home at uh, Holy Name, but you also will always have a home here. I just want to tell a quick story. Um, when Pope Benedict XVI was made Pope, he's from southern Germany, and after he elected Pope, he went back to his hometown. And his hometown threw him a parade. And legend has it that he said to himself, Joseph, this is not for you. I'm sorry we didn't get you a parade, Andy. <laughs> Once you um, become the Pope, we will for sure. <laughs> but I guess I just want to encourage you through those words. Um, we have been privileged to receive this most precious gift of the church uh, to become her priests and never to be used in a way that exalts ourselves, but always in a way where we have these privileged moments with people where they share with us their heartfelt prayers, their needs, but also their joys. You're with people in the happiest moments of their life, and you're also with people in the saddest moments and it is a privileged place to be. So I extend to you your, our greatest uh, welcome into the priesthood, this great gift that none of us deserve, and promise you our prayers. Um, on behalf of our community, we are so grateful that you um, shared your life with us and that you did this second first mass of Thanksgiving for us. Andy is 0 for 2 in choking up at the consecration but uh, over the years, uh, it is a beautiful thing to watch. So on behalf of our community, thank you. Father Preston's homily, he said that I would have one word answers. Unfortunately, that's not tonight, and I don't think I'll ever go back to that stage in my life, so this is the second homily for this evening. I just want to thank a lot of people tonight for making this Mass as beautiful as it was. First, I want to thank Lindsay and the music for your beautiful voices and your beautiful talent and for allowing us to praise God again in song and give glory to him through your words and your actions. So thank you for your, for your support and your talent. I want to thank Bishop Artosik for coming, our Episcopal Vicar. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but two years ago when I was here on internship, I called his secretary asking if Bishop Artosik would be interested in presiding at a neophyte mass for the vicariate. A neophyte is a newly ordained, a newly baptized Catholic at the Easter Vigil, and Bishop Artosik was generous enough to come on Divine Mercy Sunday at the 7 p.m. mass to welcome about 20 or so new Catholics into the faith and to, the, to see the fullness of the faith in action. So I'm very grateful for your presence here and for your support in me as a young seminarian, and now as a priest being in the St. Vicariate as I begin my ministry. I want to thank Carol Knozer for her friendship over these past four years and for helping me plan this Mass and my last Mass and 
and the other Mass that I have had to plan with her over these four years. It's a great blessing to have a fellow, fellow liturgist in house with you to bounce ideas off of, to wake up early in the morning on Christmas Day, to go to bed late on Easter Vigil night, knowing that we're in this together and we're supporting each other. So thank you for your friendship and for helping me plan this Mass above all my Masses. I want to thank Father Presta, my Papa, for preaching at tonight's Mass, for your wise words and telling all of these people how much I've grown, which is a beautiful thing. And I'm grateful for your support over these past 13 years and seeing me grow and pushing me to be the priest that I am today and continuing to follow on this path. So thank you for your words and your support and as I move into this priestly life. To Father Greg. Father Greg is my new pastor at the cathedral, so if you have any questions or concerns, talk to him. <laughs> Father Greg is a, is a son of the parish. He grew up here. He had his first Mass here on May 20th, 1978, 979. And I'm very grateful that he was able to come back. He grew up across in the house across the street with the big S. So it's, I'm grateful that he was able to take a trip down memory lane to come here with me to celebrate with me and to welcome me into the cathedral. So thank you for your presence and for being my first pastor because it's not easy having a newly ordained in the house with you. <laughs> yes, Father. <Sorry. laughs> to my brother priests, I want to single out all of you one at a time, but that would take too long and I want to be a man of short words tonight. I want to single out one of you, Father Rob Ryan, if you could stand up. Father Rob and I were ordained together on Saturday at the Polynian Cathedral. He has been a, a classmate of mine for the past four years at Mundelein. We went to Mexico together. We went to Omaha together. We shared stories in our, in our hospital chaplaincy together. We went to Israel together. And in all those times, he did not sell me off. He did not give me away to someone for free. And he made sure I was eating. So Father Rob, thank you for coming tonight and for being my classmate. <laughs> to Father Pat and Father Tommy, Father Tone could not be here tonight. He came to my Mass on Sunday. We're a Mary C. family. All of us grew together. All of us learned together. So thank you for your support for coming back. It's a good time to come back. And with a half-full church, it's not fully full yet because of the restrictions. But one day we'll all be back together worshiping the Lord. I want to thank the servers, the seminarians, and sister, my, my dear friend, Stephanie, for coming down from the cathedral. My brother, seminarians, some of you were part of my Culver's group. As Mary Seat knows, I'm a big Culver's fan. And for those of you who don't know, there is not a Culver's within five miles of the cathedral. So if you're looking for an investment opportunity, you can build one for me, and I will come and give you business. Um, one of the seminarians is Kevin from the Archdiocese of Milwaukee, who I was in, Saint, in college seminary with. So all of my brother seminarians from Mundelein, thank you for your support and for being here with me, but to Kevin for coming down during this week to celebrate with me and to pray with me. To Deacon Sam, who will be ordained a priest this Saturday for the Diocese of Joliet. <laughs> Sam and I have known each other for four years, and we both kept each other sane and joyful and happy in our time at Mundelein, and I'm grateful for your support for being here, and I'm looking forward to welcoming you into the priesthood this weekend. To Tim Berryhill, the MC, as many of you may remember last year when Father Pat was ordained, he looked at me and he said, Andy, I don't know who you're going to find for your own Andy for your own first Mass. So Tim, thank you for agreeing to be my MC. I know it can be a little daunting with me being an MC myself, but everything worked out fine. You did great. I'm very happy for you. And I'm excited to see what Mary Seat has you do when I move on to the cathedral. So thank you for your support and your friendship. Father Tim and Father Derek, two peas in a pod. <laughs> Thank you for your support over these past four years with you, Father Tim, and two years, Father Derek. Watching me grow, challenging me, teaching me how to be a priest, showing me how to be a priest, treating me as one of your own. I'm very grateful for everything you've taught me and everything you may have not think you were teaching me, but you did teach me without teaching me, actually. 
You two are very amazing priests, and I'm grateful for your support and to celebrate this Mass with you behind me. It will be different moving on to the cathedral because I will be, again, the youngest priest in the house, but I know that I have been well prepared, and if there are any questions, Father Greg, these are the people you, you should call. <laughs> so thank you for your support, for your friendship, for your brotherhood, and I'm just so immensely grateful for your support and for watch, walking this journey with me these past four years and two years. And I know we'll be friends forever, as the saying goes, and I know I'll always, I'll always have a place back here at the table. To the parish of Mary City of Wisdom, four years ago you welcomed a 22-year-old seminarian who is grieving the death of his priest mentor, and you welcomed me as one of your own. You loved me to the priesthood, you loved me to the point I am today. I'm very grateful for all of the wisdom that you taught me for welcoming me into your homes, breaking bread together, sharing stories together, worshiping around this altar together. And I am just so honored to be among those priests that can say they served here at Mary Seat of Wisdom. So all of you, as I said in my announcement of the cathedral, you're all welcome down to visit me. It's your cathedral, too. It's your home. And I know this is not goodbye. I'm here until June 30th. Father Derek is not evicting me yet. But come that day, I'm sure that we will have a celebration as I move on, as Carol moves on, as Lindsay moves on to our new adventures in life. The past nine months have been a great blessing for me as a deacon to serve you around this table, to serve you as Jesus served you. And so my gift and gratitude for what all of you have done for me and shown me and taught me as a new book of the Gospels. The reason why we're Catholic is because of one person who came among us, who walked our walk, who talked our talk, died our death, and brought us back to the Father. And this book teaches us what that life is like, what that ministry is like. And I pray that every time this book is used in this, in these, in this church throughout these Masses, that you pray for me, pray for all those deacons and priests who have gone before you, serving you faithfully, and pray for us that one day in heaven we can all be together again. So, Father Derek, on behalf of the parish, I present you this book. <laughs> to those watching on live stream, hello. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to Brenda for, for live streaming this. Lastly, I want to thank my family. I have to keep this short because my twin has to go to his patrol route at 10 o'clock. So for those of you who don't know, I have a twin brother. He is in the second pew, if you could stand up so that they see you in the flesh. <laughs> this is my twin. My younger brother and older brother have been here before for various masses, so all of you are familiar with them. But I just want to thank my family for supporting me, for teaching me the faith, for bringing me to the altar, to the baptismal font to teaching me how to be a good Christian, a good brother, a good friend. There's a tradition in the church for a newly ordained priest that they give gifts to their parents. To my, at the ordination mass on Saturday, my hands were anointed with chrism. And chrism is a, one of the three oils that we use for, ordinate, for our sacraments. Chrism is used in baptism to anoint the crown of the head to set apart the the new baptized Christian as a priest, prophet, and a king. It's anointed again on the forehead at confirmation to complete the circle of initiation. It's used to anoint the altar and the walls of a church to give glory and praise to God and dedicate them to, the, to God's service. And on Saturday, Cardinal Supich anointed my hands with chrism because it's the hands of the priests that, make the, that confect the Eucharist. It's the hands of a priest that are raised over the penitent in absolution. And it's the hands of a priest that are raised over blessing in all moments of life for the faithful to lead them back to God, to bring them to God. So after my hands were anointed, I wiped my hands with this towel, a manaturgium. And the tradition goes that the priest gives this to his mother. And when the time comes for her to be called home to God, she's buried holding this manaturgium. And when she goes up to heaven and sees Jesus for the first time, Jesus will ask her, I have given you life, what have you done with it? And my mom will say, my son shared in your priesthood. And she'll hand this to him, and Jesus will say, 
Well done, good and faithful servant. Come and hear the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So, Mom, thank you for protecting me from the time I was in your womb with my twin. Thank you for teaching me how to be, how to care for people in your job as a nurse. Thank you for teaching me how to bake. Thank you for teaching me how to cook. Thank you for teaching me how to be the man I am today. Thank you for showing me what it means to sacrifice for others and how to love others in good times and in bad. So mom, I give you this man a church name. On Saturday, after I was ordained, I was blessed to hear two confessions with this stole. And the tradition goes again in the same way with the mother, that the father is the one who teaches the priest about justice and mercy, about love and forgiveness. I present this stole to my dad that I used to hear my confessions with, because when the time comes that he is called home to God for eternal rest, he will be buried holding this stole, and Jesus will ask him as well, I have given you life, what have you given me? And my dad will hand him the stole and say, my son shared in your priesthood. And Jesus will say, come, good and faithful servant, and here at the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. My dad has taught me many things, how to change a light bulb, how to change a tire, how to garden, how to cut grass. He taught me that these hands are made for chalices and calluses at the same time. Dad, thank you for teaching me how to persevere in projects, how to set my mind to one thing, how to forgive, how to love, how to be a son, and most importantly, how to be a father. As I begin my lifetime of ministry as a father to the people of God, I'm confident that I will take the gifts you taught me and change people's lives as you, as you have changed mine. So to my dad, I give him this soul. Lastly, I want to thank God, the reason why we're all here together, the reason why we are born, we come into a relationship with him through baptism. God has a way of surprising us, has a way of showing us that he's always present. In the prayers of the faithful, we prayed for Father Ron Lewinsky, who was a very dear friend and mentor to me for four years, and the chalice I used tonight was his chalice that he used for his 44 years of priestly ministry. Father Ron taught me about the joy of the gospel, how to live out the baptismal calling of being a fellow disciple, of how being a missionary disciple, of how bringing the joy of the gospel to those that they encounter. I'm grateful for God for all the gifts he has given me, and my priesthood is a testament to all of you in gratitude for what you've shown me, what you've taught me, how you've loved me. I am the priest I am today, a sinner, but redeemed by God, knowing that I have been brought into an encounter with him, that I have seen the risen Lord, and through my ministry, I will be able to bring them, bring others into an encounter with Christ as well. I ask you to pray for me, pray for all priests, and before I forget my two grandmas, sorry. On Sunday, I gave my two grandmas four deacon stoles. I'm, I'm a transitional deacon, so I'm now a priest. So the stoles that I wore the past nine months, I gave each of them two, two of the stoles. To my grandma Sally, I gave the green and the purple, green because we're both Irish, and being Irish is amazing. <laughs> green symbolizes hope. It symbolizes that there is something beyond the tangible reality that we see. I gave her the purple one because she taught me how to forgive, how to not hold grudges, and how to love unconditionally. To my grandma Erica, I gave her the red and the white stole because she taught me that suffering leads us closer to God, and God, is not, God does not abandon us in suffering and the white one because she showed me the joy of the resurrection, showing me the universality of the Catholic faith by taking me to various parishes throughout the diocese for mass and bringing me to the cemetery every year to pray for those who've gone before us. So Grandma Sally and Grandma Erica, I love you very much. I'm glad you're here with me today. 
And thank you for teaching me how to be a servant, how to be a, a leader, how to bring others into an encounter with Christ, and showing me that I'm not too old or too young to stoop and wash another person's feet. I love you. As I was saying, I am the priest I am today, a sinner yet redeemed by God because of the love that I've been shown. And I'm ready, I'm willing. I've asked you to pray for me, pray for all priests, seminarians, that there's an increase in vocations to the religious life and priesthood. Because we need more priests, we need an encounter with God, and that can only be done through the sacraments by bringing Christ into the world through the sacraments and through the teaching of the word. Now, of my prayers for you, at any, whatever altar I find myself at, saying mass, I'll carry each of you in my heart, and I'm very grateful for your presence here tonight and your presence here on the journey with me. Thank you very much. I love you, and I will see you tomorrow morning. <laughs> One other note, uh, Father Andy will be in Wisdom Hall to give out first blessings. Uh, first blessing from a newly ordained priest carries with it instant access to heaven. So, we, I'm glad you're laughing. <laughs> but there is a special grace given, so um, please join him there. I think Ms. Melito has also made some wonderful chocolate pretzels. Unfortunately, we can't have reception, but we can have chocolate pretzels. So uh, thank you to her and her sister and her family, uh, and thank you again for being here. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.